Hey, welcome to my channel. Today is the first day of our Gooseberry Patch series. If y'all remember when I got all these books, I thought this is a good place to sit right beside the inspiration. When I got all these books and I did that heavy mail, when Joan sent me all of those that she sent me, I made the comment, I should do a Gooseberry Patch series. And I had forgot about it. And a couple of you said, hey, you should. <laughs> you know what? I just believe I will. So, I pulled out one of the books, and tonight's is from Almost Homemade. Shortcuts to your favorite home-cooked meals plus tips for effortless entertaining. I found one, then I kept looking, and I found two. So, we're going to do two. We're going to make cinnamon pistachio bread, and we're going to make enchilada casserole. So, I hope you will enjoy this series. I hope that I can find some good recipes to Weight Watcher 5, because that's what I did to these. I turn them around, make them points friendly. And um, so, that's all I know. Let's just go and get started cooking. <laughs> the first thing we want to do, you can see all my, <laughs> my mess on the side, but the first thing we want to do is to grease our pans. You can use pan spray. A lot of times I like to use the Baker's Joy because it has flour in it. Or you can use this, and it is on my website. It's a no-stick pan coating that I used to make, especially for when I used to make pound cakes all the time. It's just oil and Crisco and flour, and you blend it up real good. It um, it is the best no stick thing for a cake or a bread that I've ever used so you can wipe it on with a paper towel with a paintbrush ha however so we just want to coat the insides now the recipe calls for eight by four and a half two eight by four and a half pans but mine are nine by five so they'll be just a little bit flatter but that's what we have I was gonna make these into muffins that's what I said on my uh, menu plan portion control I wrap the muffins up stick them in the freezer but I've got to get my son he's getting some brakes put on his car Oof, I got a little bit carried on right there he gets some brakes put on his car today. He wants to come sit over here instead of at the shop. So he gets a loaf of bread. So then I only have one loaf of bread to contend with. And I figured that was easier than having to wash 18 to 24 silicone muffin liners. Even though they're not hard to wash, this is easier. <laughs> All right, now that is that. And the first step is actually to make some cinnamon sugar. And when I first read the recipe, I didn't pay attention because that's what I do. I scan <laughs> three tablespoons of sugar. And I'm using real sugar. It is factored into the points. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. But I was thinking cinnamon sugar. Oh, well, you just sprinkle that on top like I do when I make muffins. When I make um, blueberry muffins especially. David loves to have cinnamon sugar on top. Well, then I got to reading it closer. And it goes sprinkled in the bottom of the pan. So, I, I'm intrigued to see how that works. If the sugar gets all caramelized. Kind of like when you make a pineapple upside down cake. There's not going to be no juice in it. So, I'm anxious to see how that works. I'm just going to sprinkle it evenly 
So we'll just do a tablespoon at a time. I love the smell of cinnamon sugar. Okay, I think this one has hit on something. Okay, now, we just need to set these aside, and I'm going to drag all this over here, and we'll mix the cake up. So, hold on. Thing. So, instead of regular cake mix, we're going to use the sugar-free yellow cake mix. I already cut that open. And instead of the regular pistachio pudding, we're going to use the sugar-free instant. And her recipe, it just says mix and bake, so I'm not even trying to sweat no steps. Four eggs. I'm going to leave that the same. A fourth a cup and one half teaspoon of oil. I don't know what that half a teaspoon did, but I'm substituting applesauce for the oil, hoping it's going to keep it nice and moist. So one of the little seasonal sized servings of applesauce. One eighth, which is two tablespoons of water, and a cup of instead of sour cream, she uses sour cream, non fat plain Greek yogurt. It's a little bit more than a cup because that's how much I had left in the container. So we're using it. Now let's give it a mix. This smells so good. You know how pistachios kind of have that fruity smell? Well, at least pistachio, pistachio, I, I spit that out the wrong way every time. Pistachio pudding has a little fruity smell. Now what we need to add, let me stick this side. Oh, I forgot my, my mortar and pestle. Hold please. A dear subscriber, Ann Ferris, sent me this, and it comes in so handy. So we want to do grams. I have calculated where we can get, let me make sure I've got my note right, 24 grams of pecans. You get more if you weigh than if you measure in the cup. And I don't want to... Hold on. Oh, that's a lot more um, pecans than I thought it would be. Her recipe uses a quarter of a cup, but that didn't sound like enough to me. Hold on while my phone um, interrupts us. The nerve. Now, I don't want to crush these because there's enough here. I think we can still have some good sized pieces and it go through the bread enough. But when I have nuts in a bread, I, I like it pretty nutty. Like if you make banana walnut bread, I, I want some walnuts in it. <laughs> That's why I was um, doing these by the grams. Odd shaped things like this. It's hard to get a, a decent measure in a cup or something. Okay, we're gonna fold those in. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, that looks real good. Now, she doesn't say what kind of nuts. I guess if you had some stachios on hand, you could use those since it's stachio pudding, but I don't have any. And I do have pecans, and I like pecans, so, okay, now let's separate it evenly. Listen, I try at this angle, not to get in front of y'all, but 
it just does not always work. It's hard to hold. I'm trying to eyeball half and half. I apologize for whatever camera angle y'all are watching at this moment. I gotta say, I'm digging the green color. I don't know about y'all. This will be some fun Grinch Christmas bread, I think. Now, I, I'm on blue, so that's always when I plan a recipe, when I put it in Recipe Builder, that's, that's what I base my ingredients on. So, I know for purple and blue, because purple is, for the most part, the same as far as regular ingredients go, that if I get 14, hold on. If I get 14 slices, which will be 7 in each loaf, there will be 4 points. And if I get, let me look at my note, 16 slices, which will be 8, it will only be 3 points a slice. So when it comes out, I'm going to see how big it rises, how big it is, and what looks like might be a good size serving. So they are supposed to cook for 45 minutes. But since my pan is just a skosh wider... I'm going to check it in 40 minutes. Okay, I'm sure I'm in my own light, but I'm not going to cut these yet, but I wanted to show you how well that pan coating works. These have been cooling maybe five minutes or something like that. They baked for 40 minutes. That was a little warm. I told you I was going to check them at 40 minutes, and they were done at 40 minutes. So I'm anxious to see how the cinnamon It's too slippy. I can't get it. Oh, okay. The cinnamon, the sugar stick, I'm going to take that out and rub it right back on there. So the bread didn't stick. Just some of that cinnamon. See, it got a little, oh, it's a little crunchy. I don't know if it'll... That's going to stick. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to come off. But anyway. I'm going to let these cool. And then come back and we'll cut them. And see what we think about them. Okay. Now let's cut it. I already wrapped up the other one for RJ. It's. Still too hot to taste, but we're going to try to see if we can get eight slices out of it. I think that'll still be a good size portion. So that would be 16 for the whole recipe. I do want it to cool just a little bit, just to taste it better. a little bit bigger but it'll all come out in the wash Okay, it feels very, very moist. 
Let me let this cool a little bit and then we'll come back and taste it. Okay, so I tasted it and I liked it. Here's the here's the leftovers. I got somebody else who tasted it. Tell them what you thought. I thought it was very good. What did it taste like? Uh, well, you can definitely taste the pistachios and the uh, and it's still a little sweet, even though it's it's got non-sweetened, you know, sugar-free. Sugar-free. Okay. Still tastes sweet. Keeper. Yeah, yeah. Could you taste the cinnamon on the bottom? I can taste my cinnamon. No. There was cinnamon on it because y'all saw it. Y'all saw part of it fall off. That's probably the piece he got. Didn't have none on it. So, anyway, I wanted you to give you a man's opinion of a sugar-free dessert because sometimes they don't want nothing to do with it. He's a good sport. He'll eat anything I feed him, pretty much. So, there you have it. There's our first gooseberry patch recipe. Now we'll just head straight into supper. So, to make our enchilada casserole, the first thing we have to do is make our cream of chicken soup. I have a... Let me pour this water in here. One and a quarter cups of water. I have a video on this. You don't need a video. It's on my website. <clears throat> you just mix all the stuff together. The... Um, powdered, not sugar, <laughs> powdered milk and bouillon, those things, and mix it with water, bring it to the bowl, and it thickens up just almost as quick as you can blink an eye. This makes the same points as in a healthy request can of cream of chicken soup six points for the whole can and this makes exactly a can's worth so it's very economical and i gotta tell you it has always been a lifesaver to have on hand and not worry about when you're gonna need a, a can of soup did you buy one at the store or not okay that's as thick as i'm gonna make it see it's nice creamy so let's set this over here Come this away. All we have to do is mix this stuff in a bowl <laughs> and put it together. Couldn't be easier. Now I have pared this recipe down. It's not going to be as thick. Um, but I pared it down to make it more point friendly. Plus there's only two of us. We don't need some big, thick, fat, gigantic casserole. Now you need a pound of cooked hamburger that is what I already had cooked and had in the freezer so if you don't have some already cooked then just go ahead and brown you a um, pound of hamburger my recipe is based on 93% beef so your points will change if you decide to use turkey or chicken or a different um, hamburger then we want to add our can of enchilada sauce and I'm just using the mild Old El Paso. And then our cream of chicken soup. Now you can see this is looser than a can. So I, I believe what I would do. Now this is just me. If I was using it in the can, I would add just a Scotch water just to loosen it up a little bit because we're gonna um, spread this actually that sauce made it kind of thin I like it thin like that I think I would add just a little bit of water maybe whisk it in the bowl with some water first to get it nice and loose like that before you add the hamburger and the enchilada sauce. Now, let me get the casserole dish. This is just our 9 by 13. Now it's just a matter of layering the ingredients. I'm using the Mission yellow corn tortillas. It's the extra thin. Hell, I think it's like three of them is four points. But we need Ten. So we're going to use five on each layer. And all we want to do is tear them. Okay, 
last little bit try to find those little holes we need to cover. I didn't want to use any more because like I said I'm trying to keep the points down. Then we want half of the enchilada sauce. Just eyeball it. So yeah, this recipe originally made a whole lot more than this. Then half of our cheese and what I'm using is the Cabot 75% light. I'm using six ounces. That's enough um, cheese I think to make it good and cheesy but yet keep the points down. So half on this layer and half on top. And we just want to layer the other five tortillas. Kind of feels like I didn't use five on the bottom because this looks a whole lot more covered. I think I might have counted wrong on the bottom because it was not covered that well. Oh well. Then we want to do the rest of our enchilada sauce. And the other half of our cheese. This goes in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes till it's all bubbly and the cheese is melty. So guess what? I will see you back then. Boy, don't this look good. Listen, my kitchen smells wonderful. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> you can cut this into six servings or eight servings. And I'll have the points on the screen, but I think, if I remember correctly, they flip-flop. Six servings is eight points, and eight servings is six points. Well, I have hardly eaten anything all day long. I'm going for six servings because I feel like I need some food. And I get back in that craft room, and I get busy. I don't always come out to eat. And a lot of what I had was two pieces of that bread, tasting it twice. I tasted it the first time, it was still a little bit warm, and I tasted it a second time. Whew. When it gets completely good and cold, cooled off, whatever, that's when you get your best flavor. Alright, so I don't think... Um, eight points now, see it's not that thick like I said I didn't want it to be that thick okay now let me go ahead and dress it up and I'll be right back okay I just dressed it up with some lettuce and some non-fat plain Greek not Greek yogurt just plain yogurt zero points that is three quarters a cup of this corn blend that I bought that's only three points. I know corn is zero, but it's got like honey and stuff in it. That is a big serving of corn for three points. <laughs> so, considering I have already eaten today, this supper is eight, nine, ten, eleven points. I still have 15 points left for the day. So, you know I'm going to have rollovers. Now, let's see. I'm going to taste it by itself first if it's not too hot. Well, that's a pretty good little casserole. I mean, 
Let me get a little bit of lettuce and yogurt on there. Okay, I definitely recommend the lettuce and sour cream and or yogurt, whatever you want to um, take. That just takes it up to the next level. So there you have it. Gooseberry patch enchilada, enchilada casserole. Hope you enjoyed this first installment of our Gooseberry Patch series. If you think you would like to see more, let me know. And if you don't, let me know that too. <laughs> so I'll see you on my next video.